Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel at PC Attack. I'm your ports and um, today I'm going to give you the review like two days later of me owning an RTAC 3200 and also I'm going to compare it with my experience with the AC 2400 which I've owned for a little bit over a month. As of right now, as you can see right here, this right here is the RTAC 87R which is the retail version which is also considered the AC2400. I'm about to go to the administrative, restore, and send this right to, back to uh, factory, factory settings. Reason being, this router is going back. Reasons behind that is I've always had problems with the AC2400. This was like the fourth version of this router that I had to purchase through Best Buy. The other three were having um, constant drops of the 5 gigahertz band. And the reason why I was getting this router is because the other router I had previously, which was through uh, my internet provider, was also having the same issues. So for this to be experiencing the same problems through three routers, and then I still gave it a fourth chance, but before I gave it a fourth try, I actually did purchase the Netgear R8000. The reason why the R8000 tri-band went back from Netgear was because when I contacted Netgear, because I was having problems with getting my printer to connect to their router, they seemed like they didn't know that what they were doing. There was some software I needed to download, and I was asking a gentleman, just give me the web page so I could download the software to get my printer to work. Uh, I've talked to like three different people. They all act like they didn't know what they were doing because they were leading me to the wrong page. Then they were saying that it was no such thing. Now I'm like, how is it no such thing when it actually states it on a router that I could use the USB 2.0 port to connect to my printer and then I could use my printer and connect it to the network and, you know, do network print. So after so many problems with that, I went on and took it back. You know, I'm normally a fan of Netgear, but in this case, because I had so many issues concerning concerning that scenario, I went on and got rid of them. Another reason why I got rid of the R8000 was because the ASUS, the software that's inside the router right here that you're seeing in the background, is a whole lot better than Netgear's. Netgear's was giving me a little bit of issues and it was too simplistic. It didn't let me dive in and customize the router the way I wanted to. I also didn't like how the five gigahertz band, which it does share it on this router. Uh, for the first channel, I had to pick a low frequency band and then the second channel I only, pick, only could pick a higher frequency band. So for example, the 40 band will only be available on five gigahertz one instead of one and two. So. And then I think two started off at a hundred and something. Don't quote me on that number, but it was somewhere in the hundreds. So I was kind of unhappy with that situation on top of the printer share and on top of that customer service. So I actually got rid of them. Yes, I do have problems with ASUS, but when, if ever you get in touch with someone, they do know their, uh, they know their stuff, but it did take me a long time to actually get in touch with a representative. Uh, Another problem I was having with the AC2400, AC2400, even though the fourth router I got through ASUS for the 2400 didn't have five gigahertz drop problems, this one gave me a brand new problem that the other ones did share, but I was overlooking it. I was having very bad latency issues. I took off the AI Protect. I even took down firewalls. I, I turned everything down and off. And I was still having major latency issues with the um, AC2400. When I purchased the 3200, because I thought that that was just going to be an AC, a ASUS issue, I, um, I put on my AI Protect, my uh, firewalls, everything is up. I do not experience any latency issues whatsoever. I will also say that the AC3200, the software is a whole lot easier and more seamless to actually navigate through. There's no delay, there's no hiccups. Once you click on something, you're pretty much there. With the AC2400, if I was to click on like administrative or AI protect or something like that, they will, there will be a delay somewhere around there. It didn't happen all the time, but it happened most of the times. And the times that it was happening, the delay was actually kind of significant. 
you know, it will give me like a, for me personally, if I click on that, it should be there. Here, it will give me anywhere between a three to 10 second delay before it actually loads what I asked it for. And then when you change settings, as you saw right there, I restored it to uh, default. It took almost a minute or more to actually bring it back to factory settings. The AC3200 does it in less than half of that time. And I'm like, you know, what's taking it so long? Once I did a little bit more further digging, once I go into the AC2400, no matter what I'm doing, if you look at your two cores, you can always see that core one was always around 20% or more, and core two was also active. On the AC3200, core one is barely being used, and core two is sometimes around 5% or less. In core one, I did see it go to 20%. But that's when I first started activating my um, AI Protect and when the screen came back, it was up at 20% and it dropped down to somewhere around 7-8% usage. So, hmm, if you're, both, if you're supposed to have around similar specs, dual-core processors, that can only mean one thing. Maybe you, you're, uh, maybe I got a bad, they had a bad batch of processors for the 2400 or maybe the software is actually better on the 3200. I would spend more time with it to dive deeper into it, but I pretty much already made up my mind regardless. The MU MIMO support on the AC2400 that's actually giving it an edge for future proofing is actually not too future proof to me. The devices I have, none of them use it. And to me personally, because I have multiple devices, a tri-band would benefit me more than having one band a little bit faster than you know the other 1700 and something versus 1300 yes that is a good difference but if you're just using it for internet you're not going to notice it most people in america does not have a one gigabit or greater internet speed and then if you factor in that the average person as they said has around a 20 megabit or 18 megabit internet speed in the u.s unless you're doing file transfers and you have the uh, proper hard drives, you know, proper Wi-Fi adapters, everything have to coincide, you're not gonna use that speed. And a tri-band, especially with multiple devices, you remember one stream, one connection at a time, one device at a time per stream. So the other devices wait in line. Your delay is so low, you're just not noticing it. With the uh, MU MIMO, their advantage will be, you know, yes, they can have multiple devices running off of that technology. But what it's going to do is you're going to have to have devices that actually have that card. And as of right now, I have iPhone 6 Pluses, brand new iPads, and, um, you know, my computers and routers. No one supports it. And this is the X99 Asus um, motherboard here. And it's not supporting that technology as of yet. So, in the future, if I ever do upgrade to a Wave 2 router, I will still be looking for a tri-band or greater. Once you have tri-band odds, is you're not going to want to go back to a dual-band router because a lot of devices today are coming out using the 5 gigahertz bandwidth. And yes, it is backwards compatible to the 2.4, but if you have 5 gigahertz, my internet speed is well over 100 megabits. I get 160, 170. So because of my internet speed, I'm actually going to take advantage of that 5 gigahertz. The 2.4 max I received was around 98 megabits per second. And the max I received on here for the 5 gigahertz, or actually both, but 5 gigahertz on the AC2400, which was weird, I could never get over 148. On an RTAC3200, I did receive 170. And that's at the peak of what I could receive, even wired. Wired, that's all I receive anyways. Now as in for range of both of these routers. Uh, the AC2400 is a Wave 2 router, which means it's supposed to boost greater energy efficiency. I really can't tell. They use the exact same power supply. So if you have the uh, power core for your 2400, it works for your uh, 3200 and vice versa. So, and that 
reality they both get really hot to the touch after you know time has progressed so because of that i have to get a tester to see how many how much watch each one is draining but as far as i could tell they're draining about the same amount of power but don't quote me on that because i haven't tested as of yet and for range i will say this the 80 the ac2400 or 87R or U, whichever one you have, does give you slightly better range. The reason why I'm saying slightly is because of my environment. For everyone's environment, it's going to be different. So my range is for my setup, my scenario, you know, my walls, all the interference that exists inside my house. Your range will be different. So as of right now, my AC2400, I could go down to uh, three houses down, neighbor neighbor wise, and I would still get a connection. At the AC thirty two hundred, I'm starting to borderline after I pass that second house. So in other words, my signal's coming in and out, and there is a nice difference distance between me and my neighbors. So it's probably about another house difference or house and a half house and a half. Uh, difference between me and my neighbor's house but if you factor that in that's almost on some blocks some areas that's almost a six house you know span that could pretty much span a block if you think in both directions six houses one way six another plus your one that's 13 houses right there so that's actually a very good span um 3200 yeah half a house distance difference is it a lot it, it kind of is. It is a lot, depending on your scenario, your setup. Right now, my house is around a little bit over 1,300 square feet. Plus, I have a backyard. I have a front area. And uh, in my cars or whatever, it's all covered. So, no matter where I'm at, I'm completely covered. So, for me, the AC3200 is phenomenal. Yes, the 2400 gave me, if I had to guesstimate, the 2400 is giving me somewhere around a little bit over 4,000 square feet. I would probably say I'm getting around 43, 4,400 square feet, give or take. And the 3200 is giving me around 3,900 square feet range. You know, is that a big difference? Yes, depending on your scenario, but a lot of people's scenario, probably not. Um, would you have a problem with if you have a 3,000 square foot home, 3,200 reaching every point of your house? You shouldn't. Uh, even if you got a 3,500 square foot home, I don't think that you should have any problems, including your obstacles. Just place your router, if you can, at the center point of your house, and you're all set. If you can't, just place it in the best you know spot that you can. Center is preferable, but if you can't get the center position, you can actually position your antennas to try to get a better signal in certain areas like dead zones or something like that. So, in conclusion, the AC2400 is going back. And I did decide to keep the um, AC3200. And for people that are going to probably ask this about the Smart Connect. Smart Connect. I like it. And I do not like it at the same time. Reason why I'm saying that. When it works, it works phenomenal. It's a, it does a great job. But in certain cases... Like using my iPhone, a laptop, or iPad. If I go back almost a thousand square feet away from this router, it would sometimes put me on the 2.4 gigahertz band. When if you check the 5 gigahertz band, because I did separate, turn the 5, uh, the Smart Connect off. No matter where I am in my home, my 5 gigahertz band gives me perfect signal. Even until, you know, my back deck area. Right around there is where my signal starts to you know, almost drop, but it doesn't drop. I have to be at the tip of my deck before I start to notice it. Either it drops or it do not, you know, it's borderline and losing that one bar. So with Smart Connect on, when I reach the back part of my house to my deck area, in some cases, it throws me on a 2.4 gigahertz band. I did do a test back there. And when I reached the backyard area, Sometimes I lose 10 megabits. Sometimes I don't lose anything, but that's just the, you know, the nature of Wi-Fi or the internet, you know, it's not stable. 
So, hmm, when I test my 2.4 back there, depending on how much traffic, you know, 2.4 gigahertz traffic or people is on that network and it can read it in range, how much interference I'm getting, I'm getting around 60 to 90. So if I'm back there getting 150 on a 5 gigahertz, but I'm getting somewhere between 60, let's say 75 just to be fair, I'm getting 75 on the 2.4. Why is it putting me on the 2.4? And my latency on both of them were still 24, uh, 24 milliseconds, microseconds, whatever it is. And um, I was kind of found out, kind of weirded out by that. So sometimes it works great. Sometimes it, it kind of misses the ball right there. You know, it it's off a little bit. It's not perfect, but I will say this. I would prefer to have it on than to have it off because it actually is doing a good job of controlling the traffic. I don't consider to see any hiccups, any latency issues or anything like that. And if you think about it, I'm still having a 24 millisecond delay time on the 2.4 or I'm having it on my um, 5 gigahertz. And when I'm surfing the web, 60 is more than enough. I mean, watching videos or whatever like that, 60 megabit internet speed is way more than enough. So I'm not knocking and start for that, but if you're doing file transfers, that's when you will probably knock it because depending on which radio it puts you on or if you got to download a huge file from the internet and you need it right away and it throws you on a 2.4 gigahertz band, it's going to actually slow down your transfer um, your transfer speed. Like if you're downloading a movie or if you're transferring files or photos or anything like that, for that to be, you know, degraded due to it's putting you on a 2.4 gigahertz band for downloading, that could cost you time. But, you know, it's still a great router. If you guys have any questions, please leave it below in the comments and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.